Yeah, so we just welcome Sarah Cheeseman from Down Under to the There Is More podcast. We're so glad so that you're fun. joining us today. It's what, 8 a.m. in the morning, right? <laughs> Yes, that's right. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, Sarah so is... lovely to meet both of you. Oh, thank you so much. It. Sarah is um, coming to us from the Happy Profit podcast. She's from um, Brisbane, Australia, which is near and dear. I love... I spent a couple of months in Manly Beach, Australia. I went and moved over there, kind of left my life here, went and moved over there. So I, I love everything Australia, um, but we're just so grateful to have you join us today and just are so curious about your story. I, you know, yeah. I think hearing, I, I just absolutely love the name of your podcast, yeah. the Happy Prophet Podcast. Because I think so much of us, like we know the Old Testament prophets, I think people get it. Uh -huh. I think it gives the prophecy <laughs> a little bit of little a bad, doom. yeah, a little bad rap. Mm. Um, so just the joy that you have, tell us a little bit about your story, just your journey to discovering how to hear from God. Clearly you hear from him or you wouldn't have the podcast. That's such... Um, it's such a great observation that you've made, Karen, regarding mm -hmm. the prophetic. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you again for having me. Mm. Uh, firstly, Jesus is the happiest prophet ever. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we look at his life and the way he demonstrated prophecy and hope. Um, and so he's the ultimate happy prophet. And after his example, we can all be that. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. uh, so really, my journey into the voice of God is that I had just the magnificent gift and privilege of growing up in a Christian home. I'm so grateful um, to have been, you know, in a in a home that really um, valued the presence of God, pursued his voice. Um, my parents still are uh, amazing, oh. um, radical people. I think, oh my gosh, you guys are crazy. They just <laughs> oh, have gosh. laid down their lives for Jesus wow. and still pursue him. It's beautiful. Um, so they're really just a wonderful example of devotion to Jesus. Mm. And so our life was very much um, around, you know, our conversations were around what did what did God say to you and who dreamed last night and oh, what revelations awesome. did you get out of the word? Mm. And so, or, I, or we'd be like, I don't know what to do. And as, you know, a teenager, I don't know what to do with this big decision and all this difficult situation. And, and their advice would always end, begin and end with, well, what did God say? Right. Yeah. And so I think the posture of my heart from a young age has always been to look for his voice, uh. um, and which sounds funny to look for a sound, um, but I do. I look for a yeah. sound. And um, and so be, with that in mind, I didn't. we didn't actually know we were prophetic, though. I think that's a, a funny thing. We didn't have language around it. And so we just thought this is what everyone does. This oh, is how wow, everybody operates. Neat which of course the sons and daughters of God is true. Everyone yes. should be hearing should the be voice normal. of God speaking to their father. It's the most natural thing for children to know the voice of their parents. Mm -hmm. And so, um, of course, it's the same with Father God. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. when I got into my sort of late teens um, was when someone actually said, that's called prophetic. And I was like, what? Like, doesn't uh, everybody know who's about to call them or know who's about to walk around the corner oh, and, wow. and things like that? And no, not everybody knows that. And so um, we really recognize, someone told me, oh, that's actually prophecy and showed me through the word mm. and through Ephesians how it's a gift for the body to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And it really just began with the Holy Spirit teaching me in the place of prayer when people ask me, Sarah, what's your number one top tip for hearing the voice of God? I'm like, pray. The yes. prayer room, the place of intercession is the best way that you can learn and understand how the spirit flows yeah. and recognize his direction. Um, and he'll give you a word and then give you a scripture and show you a picture and then tell you to do a prophetic act. <laughs> and then one day, Pastor Catherine Ruanala, whom you, yes. uh, Karen and Rachel, know and love <laughs> as I do, um, put a microphone in front of my mouth and said, prophesy. And wow. basically I did exactly what I'd been doing in the prayer room with yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He gave me a word and then he gave me a scripture and then I saw a picture and then, you know, knew what to, to say, say and declare over a person. Okay, um, wait, so I, have to, I have to pause you. I'm so sorry. I, the, the people have so many questions. <laughs> okay, so like your parents <laughs> did not know that you were, y'all didn't know that you were prophetic, but were you in like a, I, wait, I mean, who wakes up just like doing that? I'm like, that is so fascinating to me. I mean, were, were you in a home group where they were doing that? Like, well, we were certainly part of a like a Pentecostal church, which is 
different, I think, probably to maybe different definitions there, but essentially people who love the Holy Spirit okay. um, and, and speaking in tongues and believed in healing. But I think we just thought the way that we operated was part of everyday life, that that was the experience of every believer, mm. which, as I mentioned, it, it it should be and can be. But then according to Ephesians 4, um, verse 11 to, to mm-hmm. 13, regarding um, the fivefold yeah. um, and the office of the prophet, that was sort of what... Um, I felt the Lord call me to, and then was explained to me and shifted into, wow. and went, and that's when I went, oh, that's what that is. Yeah, oh, but I mean, and I then just, I like, I, oh, I make all of a sudden my life, I made sense of me. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yes. Well, what I love what she's saying is, you know, I think a lot of times when people hear the word prophecy, yeah. immediately the bar goes up. And they think, I can't do that. That's only for certain people. Sure. And yet no one would argue with the fact that as a child, you're a sheep who knows his voice, that you should be hearing from God. That's like right. that should be just as normal, like you said, as hearing your own parents recognize in their voice. Yeah. So I love it because that's the perfect starting place, right? Oh, yeah. Is the common ground of like, this is what you're meant to do. This mm-hmm. is you're always meant to hear, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, but I think yeah, so many people, I mean, I was just so curious because I'm like, I mean, I mean, they raised her for it to be that you, normal. You were literally raised from the womb to hear the voice of God. Yeah. I mean, that's just like, yes. but that's what we can all do. I that's mean, I right. just think about people who are listening that are like raising children that are young, like make it so like make like radical Christianity normal. That's you know, right. that's what yes. you're that's I mean, because that what you were doing was so normal, mm-hmm. but it feels right. radical to most people. Oh, wow. No, it's beautiful. I think you think about every person who gives their life to Jesus. The first thing we tend to do is hand them a Bible and then tell them to begin to pray, which is talking to the Lord. And you're you're so right, Karen. I think people have this tendency to hear prophecy and think that's beyond me or too hard for me. But in its essence, which is a lie, but in its essence mm-hmm. and in its core, prophecy is hearing the voice of God. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And so we're all as believers invited into that. And and I think normalizing it in our household is really important. Normalizing it with mm-hmm. our children. I'm constantly with the kids. You know how much stuff you lose all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where's this? Where's Spider-Man? And where's this <laughs> coloring in? And where's my hat? Or where are my shoes? It's, where are the keys? You know, yes. um, it's ongoing. And uh, my go-to is always well, the Holy Spirit knows where it is. Yeah. He show us. He does. And so, and then of course he gives a word of knowledge and we find the thing. And so now the kid's response is like when I, even when I say, oh, I can't find whatever it might be. I can't find the pair of shoes. They'll then say to me, the Holy Spirit knows where they are. Yes. I'm like, yes, he does. And yes, so we ask the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it's amazing because he's so faithful and yes. kind. And he always reveals to us where the things are. Uh, which is very nice and helpful, <laughs> but it just normalizes even that for them. Like, oh, this is just how we operate. Yeah. yeah. And I think my parents even did that for us. Mm. Um, like, this is just life with Jesus. This is just how we do it. Wow. Okay. So get the mic, do the thing. Catherine's like, here you go, Sarah. Was that a pivotal turning point I mean, for that you? Was, was that it? Did, did that like light you on fire and you're like, this is what I want to do the rest of my life? I think, I I don't think it was as simple as that in that moment. I think beforehand, it was actually in the place of prayer um, where Jesus had, I finished university and I had this encounter with the Lord that totally changed um, the trajectory of my life where I still didn't quite have language. All I knew was that I was pursuing a career and and this way of operating, um, which is wonderful if that's what the Lord calls you to. And so that's what I felt I was to do. But he just totally shifted me. And he said, instead of, um, you know, applying for jobs, Mm. spend 20 hours a week, get a part-time job, 20 hours a week working, spend 20 hours a week in the house of prayer. Wow. Wow. All right, Lord. And actually, I tell the story in my book, but so I won't go into it too much because it's a long story. Uh, But that really, that season I had, Mm. um, which ended up being a year Mm. of just learning with the Holy Spirit. That's where he really taught me yeah. and cha- trained me. And so the Holy Spirit really is the best teacher. He is mm-hmm. who he says he is. And mm-hmm. so then by the time I did get to that space with Pastor Catherine, um, it was really just a way, everything on the inside of me was had been awakened right. um, yes. that year. And that and then I realized as she did it, oh, this is what I've been doing yeah. for the last year with the Holy Spirit all along. 
Um, and so, yeah, it was really beautiful. Were you writing in that season, Sarah? What were you doing with the words that he was giving? Were you giving them to people you saw that day working? What were what did that look like? How, what was the giveaway? Yeah, because the I think there is outlet. there is prophetic. You know, there's prophetic for you, and then there's prophetic for others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. So in the space of prayer, um, it was very much like for nations. And he he really taught me how to pray, how to prophesy over nations, which was awesome. But then yes, in just the simple outworking of um, daily life, because he's, you know, real, he's a very practical God, real life. And so yes, it would often look like encouraging, giving words for others. I still do now carry like a little notebook in my bag so I can like write things out and give them to people. If I, if I prefer to do it that way, then speak it to them. Um, and then, of course, who doesn't want to run into her like, now? Can you come to America and yeah. sit in Atlanta in a coffee shop and give me one of those little pieces right. of paper? Yes! Oh my gosh! Yes, Rachel, I can do that. I know you can. Add it to the list. Absolutely. No, it's so fun, and I think I love to. Eat. I think I'm very well. I'm not a complicated person. I try to just keep things simple and I've discovered the Lord just to be really childlike. Yeah. And so I just tend to enjoy him. And then the overflow of that yeah. will look like the outworking it and the and the ministry to other people. But uh, of course also in that season, I think that's just where you find him in the detail. Yeah. Or not just every season. You find him in the detail of your life and those little heart desires that you don't say to anybody or and then he does for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think really reveals his nature and his character to us and yeah. and that you know that's nothing to do with prophecy again that's just children uh, enjoying their father yeah i think oh sorry Good. one one <laughs> pause um can you share sarah i mean like giving you a heart for the nations okay i'm like tell me what that means i i don't I, maybe I have that. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't feel like the Lord is. I feel like he wants me to declare the goodness of God before the nations, but not it, it's about God's goodness for the people in the nation, not the nation. So what does that mean? I'm so interested, like words for the nations. Like, who do you call up? Like the president? I have a word for your nation. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, where do you, where does that land? Is it just a principalities? Sorry, I have so many questions. I'm like, this is so fascinating. No, this is great. Um, so it has many, for me, many outworkings and many expressions. And so um, sometimes you can't just call up, you know, the prime minister and say, here's a word for you, sir. Yes. Um, however, um, sometimes you can. Um, and then other times it is, Rachel, that it's in the space of your, your prayer closet and your prayer time and no one else ever hears it besides yeah. principalities and powers. Mm-hmm. Other times it actually looks like scribing and putting words down and, and releasing them publicly. And the amazing mm-hmm. you know, thing about um, websites and social media is that and networks, prophetic networks, is that you can get yes. the word of the Lord out really qu- efficiently and quickly, easily. Mm-hmm. But then other times it literally looks like going and getting your feet on the ground yeah. and speaking to the land and declaring the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel, mm. you know, we're all very familiar with Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. Yeah. Uh, but in Ezekiel 36, the chapter before, he actually prophesies to the land yes. before he prophesies to the bones. Wow. Um, and good, so Sarah. just actually last month I was in Tonga the uh-huh. Kingdom of Tonga, which is an island nation mm-hmm. um, on the international date line in the South Pacific. Um, and f- the Lord has just revealed to me that it's really key in unlocking the move of God throughout the South Pacific. Wow, and so I just felt them say, like, go get your feet on the land. It's like, yes, sir. And so really just spent, it's actually an amazing story. <laughs> the way I even ended up there. Oh, we're here um, for it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's in her most oh, recent okay. podcast. Oh, it's gosh. really good. Um, so it was really like a full circle for me. Yeah. I actually, at the end of my, remember how I told you about my year in prayer uh-huh, um, uh-huh. after uni? Um, so at the end of it, I felt the Lord, so this is a great example of how the Lord can put a nation on your heart. So just in prayer, I just kept hearing in my spirit one day, like Tonga, Tonga. I'm like, Lord, like I've never thought about Tonga. I've never mm. heard Tonga, Tonga, Tonga. And I simply like Google, you know, <laughs> Google and it up pops <laughs> The kingdom of Tonga, and it is, it's a, it's a democratic kingdom. It has a monarchy, um, wow. but then a, a, a parliamentary system um, and, and, and prime minister. And uh, basically they're, they're an, a nation who 200 years ago, the king, 
he picked up the dirt in his hands and he declared God and Tonga are my inheritance. And he dedicated Wowza. this nation mm -hmm. to the Lord. And before then, there had been civil unrest in the different tribes, but they were united under um, King George. And he and he was the one who, who said, this nation belongs to Jesus. And of course, the missionaries had come in by that stage. And so they really are this nation who still today have been taught and discipled of the Lord. Anyway, and so the Lord really began to put it on Tonga in my heart, and I'd been praying, praying for, for literally months. And eventually this cry came up in me of, I have to be with my people. I have to be with my wow. people. And it, I felt like for me it was the expression of Jesus in me or whatever yeah. I called to, called to release needed to be with the people. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, and so I booked my ticket as the Lord led and just went on this 10-day prayer adventure oh with Jesus gosh, and it was awesome and just loved and met the people and went to just significant places he told me wow. to go and prayed as I was led and it was awesome and then I guess then after that I came home I got married had some kids and then really um, this Tonga began to just over the last couple of years just light up my spirit wow. again but um, excuse me as we pray for the nation. So I feel like I get up out of bed in the morning for Australia, New Zealand, and the islands of the sea, uh, which of course includes Tonga. Um, oh. and, and Tonga would be like, in our, from our geographical perspective, yes. the end of the earth. Oh, wow. And so, and but really it's the beginning with the new day. And so, mm. um, mm -hmm. so cool. He really began to put it on my heart again, but you know, with COVID, and then they had a, an earthquake. I don't know if you know that. Um, mm -hmm. I've never been in January of Tonga. Last, I mean, I would have had to Google, terrible. is that a country? Oh, totally. I mean, that's what my Google yeah. search would have been like. <laughs> right. I heard this from the Lord. Is this a country? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess, um, again, geographically where yeah, we you're, are, you're yeah. Yeah. Pacific, yeah. in the Indo-Pacific, yeah. in the Indo-Pacific region, yeah. um, mm -hmm. we're sort of a, a aware of these different places and spaces. Um, and so anyway, um, they had the biggest underground, ground eruption it was an, an earth uh, an eruption under the ocean ever mm. in the history of the world and it was insane like the the tonga it sits at sea level like if you say go to higher ground like there's no higher ground yeah. and the fact that they just they did have a wave come through but not like a tsunami proportions that right. well it was a tsunami but it didn't wipe out the population the way that it could have. Like the, right. the way imagine. that the yeah. God protected them far mm. out. It's just amazing. And the way it's made it, like it actually made, they were concerned, like they live off the land. It's a mm -hmm. developing nation. Mm. And so everyone's, you know, allotted a plot of land by the king. It's amazing. Every man um, is given land so he can raise a family. Wow. And um, he, if, and it's generational. Wow, cool. And um, as, um the the wave came and all the ash they were sorry i'm going on a bit of a tangent okay, but just to like it. testify to the goodness mm. of god um as they were all concerned that the it would the ash would ruin the crops mm. and then they'd have mm. no harvest and then the people would suffer yeah. greatly but of course like the ash from the volcano has that rich minerals in it and so they actually had like mm. a bumper harvest oh, <laughs> so awesome. this past year and um, it meant that, of course, there was infrastructure that needed to be rebuilt, but now they're building for like the better. And so the mm. the overall sense is that like the Lord has changed for our good. Yeah. Anyway, but after the earthquake, it was like you couldn't get in uh, for a long time, for many months. Mm. And then towards uh, the end of last year, around October, November, I was like praying, you know, as you do about your calendar for the year and mm -hmm. scheduling things in. And I just heard the Lord say, Set a time, time set aside time in April to go to Tonga. Oh, oh wow! Just come oh, back. Yes. <laughs> yes, the word has come. I will do it. But I had no idea what I was doing, or where I was going, or who I was going with, or where I'd be. And but I just started telling people. So I walked out. I remember walking out of this room and and saying to Jesse, my hub stud, um, "I'm going to Tonga in April." He was like, oh, wow, awesome. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I have no idea. Like, who are you going to be with? I have no idea. Anyway, but I just be believed the word and, and called things that be not as though they yeah. were. I'm going to Tonga in April. Anyway, in January mm. of this year, I was at the Australian Prophetic Summit. And I will answer your question, no, Rachel. I no, I, this is perfect. This is, this is more than, I mean, above and beyond. I love it. 
Oh, you're very kind. Um, so thank you. I was uh, at the Australian Prophetic Summit in April, and um, I have the immense privilege of being part of the, the Prophetic Council here. And um, one night there was a lady there who is um, from the Gold Coast, which is a, a city yeah. an hour south of here. And um, she's Tongan and she, herself, and she does uh, amazing work around the Pacific Islands. And it was sort of one of those things where I knew that I knew of her, but I never met her. And in that season, I kind of, in a way, like just forgot, didn't, wasn't aware like that she existed really, which yeah. sounds rude, but you know, I was thinking of Tonga. I wasn't thinking of her. Right. right. Anyway, and so she was at the conference one night and she actually knows my parents, which I didn't know, but she doesn't know that I exist. I know of her, but she does, has no idea who I am. So she was talking to my dad and led by the Lord. She just said to me, said to him, I need to speak with your daughter. And he said, well, I have four daughters, which is true. I have three sisters and a brother. Oh. He said, I have four daughters and they're all here. They're all here. Who would you like to speak with? And again, moved by the Lord, she said, do you have a Sarah? Oh, and my he goodness. Was like, yes. And wow. then the penny dropped for him. And she was like, yes. And she loves the nation. She loves the <laughs> island. Wow. Anyway, so I met with this amazing woman that week. Oh, so fun. Golly. <laughs> Her name is Cindy Donaldson. And um, so we're meeting and she's telling me, like, the South Pacific is poised for a move of God. And, of course, wow. I believe that with my whole heart. So she's like telling me testimonies from Fiji and testimonies from Papua New Guinea and the Cook Islands. Oh, and, my gosh. And then eventually she's in New Zealand. And then she says, now Tonga. And then she begins to like describe all these things that the Lord's doing in Tonga. And like on the inside, I'm like, oh, yeah, by, the Lord. Like, yeah. by now I know, like, yeah. I'm going to end up going to Tonga with this woman. With like, yeah. this is yeah. the Lord, right? Anyway, so she's telling me all the things anyway. And then she stops and she said, I'm going to Tonga in April. Would you like to come with me? <laughs> I mean, the Lord told me <laughs> to set aside time. Well, actually, I cried first. Yeah, then I said I yes. And then I said, the Lord told me to set aside time. So we were there last month. And when I left, now this is to your point, Rachel. Um, the Lord said to me, release my, my mission was to release a word of life to the land mm. um, and a word of light to the bride. No, wow. I apologize. Light to the land, life to the bride. Mm, and so right. really, um, as I went into that nation, although we, we were and we were meeting with dignitaries, we were meeting with parliamentarians, we were meeting with um, amazing people of influence in finance and business. And um, it was actually extraordinary. And, you know, when you're like walking around in your dreams, you're just yes. like, yes. <laughs> God. How do I get to do this? I had a couple of significant times in prayer where mm. I just ha got my feet on the land um, and spoke a word of light as the word, as the Lord led. And, mm. and according to Genesis 1 verse 2, you know, in the, in the yeah, spirit right. uh, hovering over the waters like yeah. he did in the beginning. And the Lord declared, let there be light. And there was life. And that, that same word to hover um, mm. is what is used when the spirit hovered over Abraham and yeah. Sarah to conceive. Yeah. And so it was light to the earth, oh, but me. life yes. um, to Abraham and Sarah. And so it was, he said, light to the land, life to the bride. Wow. Um, and so that really was um, my focus in prayer. I was, we ministered to people as we loved on them, but then as we connected with local churches, prayed for the sick, all the beautiful, wow. fun things. But that, so for me, for, for Tonga in this season, the outworking of the the word of the Lord and prophecy and prayer was to actually be on the ground, yeah, and to pray and to declare the things that He had shown me before I got there, yeah. Um, but then also while I was there, as the Spirit revealed them, I just I love the way she's everything that you're saying because it's just showing the arc of the journey that mm -hmm. God takes you on, like that prophetic journey. Mm -hmm. But then there's part of me that I'm like, oh my gosh, like this life, number one, the reason why you're smiling and having so much fun <laughs> is because look at this. This is so, I mean, there's really nothing more exciting when no. you see God lining up the pieces, everything starts falling yeah. in place. You're like, oh my gosh, this is really him. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about, you know, for the listeners that we have, they're listening to this thinking, okay, I, a, I've never been invited to go to Tonga. I've <laughs> never, this has never happened to me. How do you, how do you begin to counsel someone 
to start who wants to move in the prophetic Mm -hmm. like what are the you know what are the baby steps that somebody can start you know getting into the pool in Mm -hmm. Mm, that's a great question um (laughs) (coughs) excuse me um firstly jesus is just the adventure of a lifetime yes and so if you just surrender um your your heart and your life to him it's amazing how you'll see just the fabric of who he is woven into your world and then you end up with these amazing just adventures but every day i feel like every day is just a a gift from the lord to be enjoyed and um and i love just to find him in the detail of our lives and so like my day here at home with the kids with sick kids even um it can ju- be just as rich and fulfilling as a day on the beach in paradise right mm-hmm. uh, that was i was referring to tonga when right. i was <laughs> exactly um, so, um, but when it comes to baby steps, Karen, I think um, firstly and f- first and foremost, sometimes um, we don't actually realize that we've been hearing the voice of God. So yeah. what I love to help people do is identify the source of the sound. Good. And so sometimes we talk to people and they don't think they're hearing from the Lord and they're like, oh, well, in my heart, I had like this sense mm-hmm. that I was to do that. I'm like, that's, that's the it. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Like yeah. ministering to you, communicating to you, or they'd be like, "Oh, I had this dream," and I'm like, "Yes, that's the voice of the Lord speaking to you." Or I lit- saw this literal sign, or I had, I just knew, and I'm like, all these things, <laughs> or a song played, and and I understood this. You're right. I'm like, that's the Lord communicating yeah. to you. Or I read the word, and revelation came forth. I'm right. like, yes, that's the Father speaking to you. Yeah. And so oftentimes. We think that we have this idea that it needs to come like this voice out of heaven and this Mm -hmm. loud, big voice, which it booming, which it can be. Um, But of course, nine times Mm -hmm. out of 10 for me, it's found in the whisper, Mm -hmm. it's found Mm -hmm. in the nudge in my heart or or, or knowing I'm like, it's like I, like I said, I I look for the sound. So I often see things in the spirit. Um, But just to begin with, I think just simply asking the Lord to help you recognize the ways in which you hear. Mm -hmm. So I do that. I do this, I guess, activation with uh, students at the Academy, which is glory cities, Bible school. I teach at the, in the prophetic stream there. It's like, I like to call it like a a word and spirit school. Oh Mm -hmm. yeah. Combining of the two is beautiful. But um, anyway, um, there, one of the activations we do, as I say this week, and maybe this will help your listeners, Karen, um, this week, whenever the Lord speaks to you, write down the way in which he spoke. Mm, whenever you feel his presence, identify how did I experience his yeah, presence. Yeah, yeah. So I do this even with my kids, you know, when we're, if we're, you know, we're, we're in worship and I'll say like, okay, are you feeling anything in your body? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, they'll often be like, oh, I feel like a warmth in my chest. Mm. It's like, okay, that's the presence of God. Right. Honestly, the presence of the Holy Spirit or, oh, my fingers feel tingly. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to ask Holy Spirit, what should I do with my tingly fingers? Right. Are they for healing for somebody? You know, are they for joy for someone or are they for joy for me? Mm-hmm. And so just begin to identify as you're in the Lord's presence, where do you where are you speaking? How are you speaking? Because God speaks your language. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a personal God, yeah. and the things that are really important and valuable and mean something to me might be very different to the way um, that to, yeah. to the things that are valuable and important to you, Karen. So for example, um, in Australia, we have these beautiful birds called kookaburras uh-huh. and they make a laughing sound and they're hilarious. Actually, when they really get on it, they just go mm-hmm. for it. And they're so mm-hmm. funny, but we've got lots of them here in our backyard. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I hear them and I think they're fun and they're beautiful. Um, however, um, it doesn't really change my day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But if a, a, a sulfur crested cockatoo comes into the yard, I think, oh, he loves me. Mm-hmm. And so, however, I have a friend who's actually American and lives in Australia. <laughs> and if she sees a kookaburra, it's like, you know, thrilling Valentine's Day, right? Uh-huh. Wow. The Holy Spirit. And however, for me, it doesn't particularly move me. They're beautiful, yeah. but it doesn't move me the way it moves her. Yeah. But the cockatoo moves me, right? right. And so he speaks your language. Yeah, um, he does. So find him in the way that um, makes sense to you. Yeah. And I love that about him. And of course, there's 
uh, that's a, a you know just a very fun way to mm-hmm. identify that he's speaking but it's practical um, and i think you know to your one of the things that i'm hearing you say cuz i think a lot of times when people are trying to hear from God. They're trying to hear for decisions. Mm -hmm. And what I hear you saying is, oh, he loves me. He delights in me. He loves to send this bird to me because he knows it's going to be so joyful Uh for me. Like he's speaking in the language of of relationship and and joy and love Mm -hmm. as opposed to like, you will be going to Tonga in April. (laughs) I mean, that's exciting to get. And I think when we start looking for him to speak through direction, we get all like, you know, paranoid about that as mm-hmm. opposed to like, why can't his voice just be for your own joy that day? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's such a great point. I'm so mm-hmm. glad you brought that up because when I wake up in the morning, I'm expectant. I expect to wake up hearing from the Lord oh, yeah. just for relationship, sure. just for daily life. I, I say like Jesus gets the first kiss of the morning, mm. you know, Aww. and so it's our our relationship mm. with him that, that builds and like a good friendship, it just gets better with time. And as we make room and cultivate um, places to hear his voice, mm. decisions aren't intimidating. Mm, yeah. They're still important, but it's not like I'm just here. Could you imagine if I just went to see my parents or my talk to my husband and when I needed to make a decision, yeah. like, that's not actually a, a vibrant relationship. Right. Like, yeah. no, I love to spend time with him. I love to speak with him. I love his company. Um, and it's not contractual. It's it's relationships because yeah. I love him. And so I, I love that example you used. So in the morning, even this morning, like I wake up with um, Holy Forever is the song that I woke up with this oh, morning. Yeah. And so that, that then becomes like my launch pad into intimacy. Cool. I'm in my quiet time with the Lord today. It's yeah. like, all right, that's where we're starting today. And yeah, then it grows cool. from there. Or I'll wake up with a dream or of an encounter I've had overnight, but, or he'll speak as I wake. But my expectation um, is that I'll hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's like, as you said earlier, um, that we're, the, uh, his sheep hear his voice yeah. and as strangers they don't follow. Yeah. And so what? that also I think reveals his character to us. I yeah. think too, it's so funny. Like we teach kids like how to recognize when they're sick. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like yeah. we, we, we teach them how to recognize everything, but the presence of God, right. like, especially yeah. I would say in America for sure. It's like, nobody's in Sunday school being like, okay, where did you feel God in your, in your body? But yet we're like, do you have a fever? Are you, are you sick? Like, let me get a thermometer out. I mean, it's like, where's the thermometer of his presence? Like, that's what we need to be really sharing with kids. You know, it's funny, even as you were talking, we had, we had a, a guest on a little while ago and right before we came down to podcast, I heard myself singing that song, honey from the rock. Uh And, and I remember thinking that's, I like, I don't know why I'm, where'd that song come from? And then he talked about the yeah. presence of the Lord, our, our guests that we had, the presence mm-hmm. of the Lord would come every evening at 6 p.m. like honey. And I was like, that's oh, for me. That's, so cool. <laughs> that's for me. I love that. So, I mean, it's, you know, seems so silly. Like, what does so that fun. mean? Well, it's just, it meant that he was talking to me and that's exciting. Yeah. But I'd love to hear so like, good. you know, can you give us a story of, just something that really touched your heart that a word that you had for a person, not necessarily a nation, but like really a person that you were like, oh my gosh, God, you are so amazing. Like, is there anything that kind of stands out in the, maybe the recent past that was just a really neat, fun, kind of something that broke open that person's life? Oh, yes, I'm sure there is. <laughs> Get that Rolodex out, Sarah. Oh, no. Where is it? Where yeah, is I'm it? I'm trying to think of of one. Yes, actually. Um, so I was with a friend who has just had some long-term um, illness and, um, and just kind of was particularly discouraged one day and kind of felt like she couldn't get out of her own way, basically. And so I just said, let me pray for you. And began to pray for her and then began to just um, minister healing to her. But then just the Lord's amazing because he reveals the secrets of men's hearts, not to embarrass them, but to communicate his love for them. Prophecy is a sign and a wonder. It's impossible in the natural for me to know your past, present and future. Right. Right. Like without the power of the Holy Spirit. Like I think sometimes we forget like prophecy is actually incredible. It's an amazing gift of the Holy Spirit and that couples 
so beautifully with evangelism and with the p- pastoral Rolling. care, mm-hmm. um, for sure, um, with healing. And so, course, yeah. um, and so love, love, love it. And so I was just, um, so the, it's not like I prophesy, so I don't do anything else. No way. Like my prophecy just aids the other yeah, gifts. Yeah, 100%. And so, um, ministering to her. And it was just a couple of phrases, a couple of words um, that I said that just, it was like it unlocked something totally. in her spirit, in her heart, and she just began to weep. And, you know, often <clears throat> in prophecy, when you're giving a word to someone, um, you don't often know the whole history or the the backstory. Um, and so you don't, you see that the Lord's moved them, totally. but you don't always hear the fullness of it. Right. Um, but she really just unlocked her heart in that moment and gave her hope again. Yeah. to believe again. And that's what I love about prophecy. I feel like prophecy is about your freedom. Yeah. Prophecy is about like it sees well, there's a problem, but it sees the solution and yeah. the answer, and it pulls people supernaturally from like one reality to another or even from like hopelessness and despair into hope and new life. And it offered that to her that day, and it was extraordinary. It was yeah. beautiful. And so I feel like though that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Because that's who he is. He's a good father who loves his kids. Yeah. And he you talk to any parent, it doesn't matter if their kid's been a scallywag this week. Yeah. He always that's that you always have something <laughs> wonderful to say about your kids. Right. Always. Yes, that's totally. a good point. Yeah. Same with the father and us. It doesn't matter how someone's been behaving. He always has something wonderful mm-hmm. to say about them. And so we get to communicate that to people. Mm-hmm. And it's unreal. It's yeah. Awesome. It's so funny. While you were talking, Sarah, the Lord was like, tell Sarah to uh, to pray that people would think bigger, mm. that, that they would think I'm bigger than I am. Like, that's what the Lord was saying. Well, I guess we end. I mean, it was just, it was, I was like, oh, okay, I Jesus, I got it. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. like I heard, but I mean, you think like, Sarah, here's the deal. Yeah, like you no get limits. a word, I mean, you get a word from the Lord and you're like, he's calling me to do yeah. this. Like, yeah. I think people are like me, little old me. And you're like, I, I mean, what? You're so young. I mean, you've got these two little kids. I mean, most people be like, oh, this isn't my season yet. And you're like, I'm going to jog and put my little feet on the land. And I mean, honestly, like you think big. And yeah. I just think people, we aren't thinking big enough. No, right, right. We're not thinking big enough about what God can do with a phrase. Hello. I mean, it's so powerful. Yes. My gosh, like- that, I think that's what the Lord really wants you to pray over the people who are listening is just that we would think that he was big enough in us to do mighty, wondrous things. Yeah. I mean, really, yes, that's what absolutely. it's about, you know, like believe that yeah. he's big enough in you when you don't mm-hmm. feel big. He's big enough in you to do the things. Yeah. Sorry, I just no, it's had good. a word from the Lord <laughs> and I feel like I need to say it. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Obedience is best when it comes to the voice of God. That's like, right. <laughs> we talk about that, like love and obedience. Let's get, do it. So yeah. yes, absolutely. Thank you, Lord. I'd love to. Mm. I'd love thank to. You, oh. Thank you, Lord, that you're better than we've ever mm. hoped or imagined or believed, even till this point. Mm-hmm. Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're just coming even to make your fatherhood real to us afresh yeah. mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I feel like just, again, it's just very simple, the simplicity mm-hmm. of Matthew four nineteen, mm-hmm. where Jesus speaks and he says, follow me. Mm-hmm. Follow me and I will make you fishes of men. Mm-hmm. But I feel like today when it comes to believing bigger, I feel like the Lord's saying you don't have to try harder you don't need to work up anything. Yeah. It's not of your own strength or your own doing. You just get to follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just get to follow me. Mm-hmm. You just get to follow the leader. I hear him saying it's like a game of follow the leader. Yeah. You, wherever I go, you go. Just as Jesus modeled to us, doing what he saw the Father doing, saying what he heard the Father saying. I hear him saying there's an invitation for you today to simply follow me. And the outworking of that was for the disciples, fishes of men. Yeah. And the outworking of your faith, simply following Jesus, will look like the kingdom moving forward by fish hopping into the boat, yeah. by um, mm. people encountering the love of Jesus, by relationships being restored, bodies being healed. And I hear him saying, just start with a step. 
Yeah. Just start with the step following me. Don't you don't even have to worry about right. you know the big the marathon mm-hmm. um, of a lifetime of steps. But I hear him saying, just follow me today. Yeah. Follow the leader, follow the lion, follow the still small voice, and yeah. you'll be amazed at what I will do in you first and foremost, and what I will do through you. And I thank you, Father, that you're just lifting. I see him just lifting our heads, lifting our heads to the horizon causing us to um, dream and think even bigger than we have to this point. Lord, I thank you in Ephesians. You tell us that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can ask, hope, or imagine according to the power at work in us. And I thank you that that power is an an insignificant one, but it's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And so, Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will do that for them exceedingly abundantly beyond in Jesus name more, more, more. And I feel like I'm saying, Mm -hmm. I'm just wetting your appetite today. Mm -hmm. I'm wetting your appetite for the sound of my voice. I'm Mm -hmm. wetting your appetite for my love, Mm -hmm. for my love, Mm -hmm. for intimacy with Jesus. And so I thank you for that Lord, because it's out of that place of intimacy. I feel him say is that becomes like the launch pad for dreams that becomes Mm -hmm. the launch pad for the promises of God. That big, becomes the launch pad um, for everything that he wants to do uh, in you, everything he wants to do through you. But I thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, that life with you is a a never-ending love song. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, as we Mm -hmm. enter into, we enter into that just place of following you, Lord, I thank you for the rest. I thank you that that following you is walking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not wrestling with Jesus. It's not burnout with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not running as hard as I can with Jesus, but it's walking with you. And so I thank you for the steps for today. Yeah. I thank you for the steps of walking with you, Lord. And like little ones, Lord, who love to hear the voice of their father, we incline our ears, Mm -hmm. we incline our spiritual ears to hear. Lord, and I thank you, Father, even for those, Lord, who um, I want to begin in this journey. I I really feel like there is an activation for those listening today. He's activating your senses Mm -hmm. um, to hear, see, feel, smell. What are they? Hear? (laughs) Hear? No. Sense? (laughs) Let's start again from the beginning. (laughs) Hear, see, smell, touch. Taste. Feel. Taste, feel. Feel. Is that touch though? taste we get the idea (laughs) you get the idea all those that's right i'm sorry all those five senses that exist in the natural exist in the spirit that's right that can be activated in the spirit and so that's what he's activating in in us today Mm. and those of you who are like well i just want to follow the the leader i just want to follow Mm. the lion so i thank you lord that you're just activating Lord, those five senses in them in the spirit, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they'll begin Mm. to see clearly and hear, Lord, um, more loudly. Lord, I think you're increasing the volume today in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the revelatory gifts, just being open wide to them. Lord, the sense of your presence, Lord, the understanding, Father, of of who you are, Lord. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, Mm -hmm. to come to them in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're activating them, Lord, to perceive and to understand, Lord, and to sense, Mm -hmm. Lord, your voice, to sense your presence, Lord, to know the way to walk in in Jesus' name. I thank you for that, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, just for, I hear him saying, it's like the beginning of an adventure. So, Lord, Mm -hmm. I just thank you, Father. For all that you're opening up to them prophetically, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the grace. Lord, I just release the grace over them today to prophesy in Jesus' name, the grace to hear your voice in ever-increasing ways. Yes. I just bless that mm. in them today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Smell. It was smell, smell. we were missing. <laughs> smell. smell. There you go. Yeah, so you can smell Oh, my gosh, spirit. that was so good. <laughs> I, I literally so just thing. kept seeing those words, um, and I will make you. Uh-huh. I was seeing them in all caps. You were mm-hmm. kept saying, come and follow me, come and follow me. And I just kept hearing, and I will make you. Like, he's the one that he's does doing it. it. All I got to do is agree to follow, and he is doing the making. Yeah. He's yeah. giving. Yes, that's such a you good know? word. <laughs> it's like, it's so, it, it, I just felt like that burden come off of like, oh, that's hard. It's, yeah. You know, no, I will make you. I'll yeah. do it. 
So yeah, that thank you great. for just kind of demystifying oh, it all. Oh, no. Oh, well, oh, that's my desire. And Karen, that was just such a wonderful example of how like we, it's a story for another day, but how we prophesy apart and how we need one another to get a full picture of what he's saying. So yes. thank you for that magnificent contribution. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it's it. funny because we are recording a Bible study called He Speaks, Sarah, and we were just talking about the how we need to talk about all the senses, mm-hmm. like not leave out, you know, taste and smell and how important those two are. Mm-hmm. And it was like, Oh my gosh, I know it was weird. I was, like, I was like, are you hearing this? Uh-huh. We just talked that's about so this cool. not even three hours ago right, because seriously. you don't like, you don't have a lot. There's not a lot of teaching out there on, on those two senses and how the Lord mm. works through them, you yeah, know? And so sweet. it's kind of cool. So we just, we love you. Like you're our friend. I, know. I mean, She's this our is people. amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when you come to glory city, Atlanta, we have to know. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I was there last year, but oh. um, now that we know one another, I'll be sure to let you know. Yes. Right. So fun. We'll, so we'll, great we'll, to we'll meet be tracking you. too. We love you so much. Thank you Take so care, much, Sarah. Sarah.